Hello and welcome to Bite Size MRCP, a manageable way to digest the things that you need to know for your MRCP exam. We are two junior doctors based in the UK who have passed all three parts of the MRCP within the last five years and want to help you do the same. We're not associated with any MRCP examination organizations and the materials covered are by no means an exhaustive list of what can come up in your exam and indeed are not intended to be used as medical advice. Please refer to your college of entry or your friendly supervisor for further questions regarding the exam and syllabus. If you like the sound of what you hear today and would like to join us for more bite-sized revision, give us a thumbs up and press the subscribe button. Now, without further ado, let's get into today's topic, which is on leishmania under the section of infectious diseases. This is a picture of leishmania donovani in the bone marrow. It's very unlikely that they ask you this in the MRCP exam, but it's always good to have a rough idea about what a histopathology of a particular bacteria or virus might look like. The epidemiology of leishmania is that it is a zoonosis infection, as in it is transmitted to humans by sand flight bite. It's endemic in certain parts of the world, particularly in the Mediterranean belt, and it normally extends to the Middle East into Asia and Eastern China. It's also endemic in rural Kenya and Sudan and parts of South America, especially Brazil. The epidemic visceral leishmaniasis, which is known as Kalazar, still occurs in northeast India and Bangladesh. The cutaneous leishmaniasis is mostly found in South America and Central America, as well as the Middle East. The visceral leishmania it has an incubation period of two to eight months. It's normally presented with fever, weight loss, abdominal pain and swelling, and massive splenomegaly or hepatomegaly. And this may also be associated in the case of advanced HIV infection, which may develop many years later. So as you can see, this is quite a common presentation symptom to the acute medical take, and in somebody who is presenting with symptoms of fever, weight loss, abdominal pain, and hepatosplenomegaly, of course, the alternative diagnosis that you do need to consider is malignancy, including lymphoma and hematological malignancy. The cutaneous leishmania has an incubation period of about one to two weeks. It presents with itchy papules at the bite site of sandfly, resulting in ulceration. And it usually leaves some satellite lesions or sporotrichoid spread along regional lymph nodes, resulting in lymphadenopathy and lymphadenitis. The investigation that's important to consider for the case of visceral leishmaniasis is that the parasite may be found in a splenic aspirate bone marrow or buffy coat. The serological diagnosis is based on detection of leishmania antibodies. The cutaneous leishmaniasis, it normally requires a lesional biopsy and you would normally be able to demonstrate the parasites on the biopsy. However, this specific speciation can be made on PCR. The management is normally through the case of uh, liposomal amphotericine for visceral disease. Um, however, it's really quite expensive. The other option is going to be sodium stiboglucanate and aminocidin, all alternative and cheaper treatment options that are particularly used in resource-poor countries. Sodium stiboglucanate is a drug of choice for cutaneous disease though, however. The complication of leishmania infection really is the state of immunosuppression that frequently resulting in superadded infections. Mucocutaneous leishmaniasis or spondia is frequently due to the recurrence of a previously untreated or poorly treated leishmaniasis with leishmania brasiliensis. Let's do some questions. A 35-year-old man presents with fever, weight loss, abdominal pain, and a splenomegaly after returning from a trip to India. Laboratory test reveals pancytopenia, elevated liver enzyme, and hypergammaglobinemia. 
A bone marrow biopsy demonstrates the presence of Leishmania donovi, a mastigotes, within macrophages. Which of the following is the most appropriate initial treatment? Option A is miltefacin. Option B is ivermectin. Option C is liposomal amphotericin B. Option D is primaquin. And option E is pentadamine. So here they have already told you that the diagnosis is Leishmania donovi, but they want you to think about the correct option for treatment. So hopefully by reading this scenario, you would have come to the conclusion that this is consistent with visceral leishmaniasis. And therefore, the correct option for treatment is going to be option C, which is liposomal amphotericin B. Thanks for listening to this episode of Bite MRCP. If you like what you heard today, give us a thumbs up and hit the like and subscribe button to make sure that you don't miss out on our next episode. Let us know in the comments which topics you would like to hear in the future. See you in the next episode.